today on All Rights Reserved. What do you know about U.S. copyright law? I work in photo mm -hmm. at Walgreens, and we can't legally sell any pictures that look like it's copyrighted. Otherwise, we get in trouble, and we could get fined like $10,000. I mean, if I want to use a sentence I feel like 22, <laughs> then, then, you know, it's kind of my right to say I want, I want to feel that sentence. The Supreme Court has rules in the past that copyright law would be unconstitutional without clauses like fair use. Copyright, 1790, the encouragement of learning. That was its sole purpose then. Does it seem like we've strayed? How do we go from encouraging learning to protecting rights of creators? How does ensuring profitability promote progress? Copyright should be balanced, both creators and users, but it's not anymore. This is All Rights Reserved, a podcast advocating for true copyright reform. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of All Rights Reserved. I'm your host, Rico Robbins. Before we get much further into this, I wish to clarify that I am not a lawyer or anything like that. I am a digital media student at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, where I learn about audio and video production and editing. I also like editing several videos in my spare time. As a student interested in making videos, including ones where free use is my best friend, I am a strong advocate for copyright reform that is balanced and respects fair use. One way I can easily help share my views with others is through a podcast. And that is precisely what this is. All I Deserved is a podcast pushing for copyright reform that truly restores balance to the content creator's interests and the content user's interests. As I lived in the United States, I will be covering U.S. copyright law. Also, due to the nature of this podcast, I am licensing this series under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Creative Commons will be a topic we will discuss a little later in today's episode. But for now, simply know that if you credit me and link back to the original video, and even if you remix, modify, or straight up re-upload this, any way that you like it, you do not need to get permission from me first to do so. You are free to do it. Now, on to today's topic. Let's face it. Copyright is a legal concept which can be difficult to understand and even be a dry subject at times. However, in order to understand why our law should be reformed, you need to understand why it is flawed which then requires a basic understanding of current copyright law. To better understand what other students already know about copyright law, I asked a few peers some basic questions about copyright law in a segment I like to call peer-to-peer -peer interviews. What do you know about U.S. copyright law? Um. I mean, I don't know too much about it, but I know it's not legal for you to, like, take material from another person that another person did and use it as your own. Um, I don't know a lot about U.S. copyright law. Don't know much. What do I know about U.S. copyright law? Honestly, not too much. It's something I never really looked into. Um. I don't really know anything about the U.S. copyright law. All I know is that the only thing I probably know is that if you're going to cite someone or quote someone, you have to provide some type of link or some type of citation. I don't know if that counts. Um, um, I'm, I don't know much about the U.S. copyright law, but I know when to give credit and not to plagiarize. Someone else's 
self-written material without permission. Circumstances when you're allowed to use someone else's copyright material, um, you should always ask permission to use the copyrighted material. Otherwise, it's not necessarily legal to use someone else's copyrighted material. Me, personally, I don't think it's okay at all. I mean, if you work in a business setting and you're taking your own business photos, maybe, for like a PowerPoint or something, but even then, I don't think it's okay unless you cite your source. That way, I mean, you're covered, because I work in photo at Walgreens, and we can't legally sell any pictures that look like it's copyrighted. Otherwise, we get in trouble and we could get fined like $10,000. So, I don't think it's right at all, unless you cite your source. Right, yeah, so if you're going to use someone else's copyrighted material, you have to cite them. I know you can use somebody else's copyright material if it's in the free domain. Otherwise, if it's copyrighted, I don't think you can use it at all. What circumstances, if any, are you allowed to use someone else's copyright material without permission? Um, you're not supposed, you're not allowed to use anybody else's um, information without permission. That's what I know from that. I got some mixed results, as you can probably see from my peer interviews. But what exactly is copyright? Copyright was first established to create an incentive for writers and artists to create works that benefit the public. Copyright establishes several exclusive legal rights for the creator of a literary or artistic work, which can include books, movies, songs, and their sound recordings, art, and many other things. These rights include the right to copy, distribute, publicly perform, and publicly display their work as well as the right to make derivative works, such as sequels, adaptations, translations, and so on. For the most part, if you are the author, you own the copyright to the material as soon as it's created in a permanently fixed form. However, if you are paid to make the work for someone else, it is usually considered a work for hire. Use, assuming that term is used when signing a contract with your employer, the copyright for a work for hire would then belong to the employer. For instance, if you are hired to film a commercial for a business, typically you would be considered the author for the commercial because you recorded it, and therefore you would usually be considered the copyright holder in normal circumstances. However, under a contract for a work for hire, the copyright would not belong to the author, but instead it would belong to the business who paid for you to record the commercial. Another thing to point out is that copyrights aren't quote unquote immortal. Copyrights only last for a limited amount of time. After that time is up, the content falls into what's known as the public domain. Public domain material is free for anyone to use for any purpose. Public domain includes both content where the copyright has expired, as well as things that are not eligible for copyright. That's right, not everything can have copyright protection. For instance, Basic ideas and facts cannot be copyrighted. No one can own the copyright to the list of the 50 states in alphabetical order. Even creative ideas can sometimes be too basic and fall into the public domain. For example, you can't copyright talking trains. That is an idea. However, the form that idea takes such as Thomas the Tank Engine or Disney's Chuggington, and the visual style of those series can be copyrighted. This concept, known as the idea expression dichotomy, is especially important because without it, copyright law 
would be considered unconstitutional on grounds of free speech. Most of the time, if you want to use someone else's copyrighted work in your own project, you will need to get permission from the copyright holder first. However, there are several limitations to the exclusive rights to the copyright holder, including the concept known as fair use. Fair use allows you to reuse content without the copyright holder's permission for the purposes of criticism and commentary, as well as some newsworthy and educational uses, and even parody. Fair use is actually really important in copyright law, just like the idea expression dichotomy. A Supreme Court has ruled in the past that copyright law would be unconstitutional without clauses like fair use. There are four factors to be considered together when deciding if the use is a fair use or not. These factors include the purpose and character of the use, the nature of the work, the amount of substantiality of the work used, and the effect the new use has on the original work's market value. To break these down, fair use requires a purpose and character of the work to be taken into consideration, such as if your work is highly transformative, adding new meaning or message to the original work, or if it simply just uses it as is. Transformative uses are usually considered to be fair uses. The nature of the work takes into consideration as if it's a fact-driven work, such as a non-fiction book, or a newsworthy piece, or if it's highly creative, such as a song or a movie. Because facts cannot be copyrighted, fair use is more likely to be found if the work being borrowed from is a non-fictional work. It also considers whether the work is published or not. The amount and substantiality considers the amount used. Usually smaller is better, but even a small amount if taken from the heart of the original work can be found to not fall in favor of fair use. And finally, courts have ruled in the past that the fourth factor, whether the new use has any effect on the original work's market value, is considered to be the most important factor in fair use. Negative criticism, obviously, is, can be considered fair use, so it's not looking at whether you will drive people away from the work necessarily. Instead, it will be looking at whether your new work is in a competing market with the original, thus diminishing its value. For instance, music reviews do not compete with the original album itself. Therefore, a negative music review can be considered fair use, even though it's criticizing the album. Also, no one fact is decisive. This determination of fair use must be made on a case-to-case -case basis. Fair use for one case may not be fair use for another case. Another thing we will talk about is Creative Commons. We'll discuss that more in a different segment in a little bit, but I wish to explain what Creative Commons is. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that allows you to essentially license different original works under these licenses, which will allow others to adapt, reuse, remix, and basically allow you to use it for any purpose you want. Like this podcast is under a Creative Commons Attribution license, but there are five other ones. There's Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike, for instance, which would require you to license this podcast under the exact same license even if you remix it. There's also classifications if you don't want people to remix it, all no derivatives. And there's also one if you don't want people to use it in a commercial setting, which is 
non-commercial. There's several mixes in between of all those things. Either way, the most freeing Creative Commons license will require at the very least to attribute to the author of the original work, regardless of what you do with it. As I explore these topics, one thing that I like to actually add to these podcasts is a second opinion and a second voice. So, what I like to add is a roundtable discussion with different co-hosts. So let's head into the discussion now with Caitlin Wren and Seth Wani. Hi, I'm Caitlin Wren. I'm Seth Wani. Okay, and obviously I'm Rika Robbins. And for our roundtable discussion, we're going to first dive a little bit into fair use. Okay, like I said before, fair use allows you to reuse content without the copyright holder's permission for the purposes of criticism and commentary, as well as some newsworthy and educational uses, and even parody. And and, and there are four factors that are considered together when deciding if the use is fair use or not. These factors are the purpose and character of the use, the nature of the original work, the amount of substance of the work used and the effect the new use has on the original work's market value. I'm just trying to think of a good example. Okay, here's a good example I thought of. So say you're reviewing uh, Taylor Swift's latest album and you, and you quote a few lyrics from one of her songs, reviewing like her lyrical style, say. That belongs to her because it's her song. Yes, but it's fair use because it's it's done for criticism, done for commentary. It's not, even if you're highly critical of Taylor Swift's style, it, you, Taylor can sue you for copyright infringement in your review, if that makes sense. So what you're saying is that Taylor Swift couldn't say that you took her right off her song because it's just a quote for what you said. Uh, yeah, depending on like the conditions that are laid out in the law I mentioned before. Right, right. Uh, and uh, just to, to recap cap those, uh, like is it a for transformative purpose and character? Is it, or is it just using the work as is? Is it, is the nature of the work highly, highly creative, or is it factual? And is it is the work pu- published or unpublished? And the amount of substanti- substantiality. How much of the work did you quote? And is that quote from the heart of the work? And and what effect does? does this new use have on the original work's value? Does it compete with the original work or does it, is it transformative enough that it works with, within its own market? Okay, so if I say to you, hey, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. That would be non-copyright or would it be copyright? In your opinion. It depends on how you're using it. Because when you're just saying, like, you're in a conversation and you say you feel 22, <laughs> then it wouldn't then it be, won't copyright. be copyright. But if you were to say that in the public domain in Taylor Swift's words, you could. Like for a project. Like for a project, you almost stole that from her because yeah. that is her quote from her song that she wrote. Mm-hmm. But if you were to use that just to say in a sentence, in a plain sentence. Like, I'm feeling 22, 22 today. Yeah, and some people literally are for their age. So it wouldn't really be a copyright issue because it's just a sentence. Mm -hmm. But if you were to use that in a song of yours, in a script of yours, in a newspaper or anything like that, for the public eye to see and you use her quote... Then it'd be copyright. Then it'd be copyright and you would have to contact her in order to use that quote from her song. Yeah, unless she says otherwise somewhere. Somewhere that you can use some of her lyrics from her song. Yeah, and just say... You have to give credit this way or something. 
Right, exactly. And that's that's generally a good example of of fair use. And another thing I just want to add is if is like for that example for twenty two, if you're like reviewing the song, then then generally speaking, you would be allowed. You know, to quote it, like if a newspaper is reviewing the song, then it would be allowed. But if it's just say just using it just because you can, then it's very questionable. Well, it is questionable. Yeah, it is questionable because it all depends on which way you're using it again. In my opinion. Okay, so so how applicable do you think that fair use is today, especially in a digital age? Like how? Uh, what do you mean by applicable? Applic- can't even speak. Like, applicable? That's it. Can't uh, speak. Uh, like, like, h- how much of fair use is needed in today's digital world? Would you say that it's not in- entirely needed? Do you think it needs needs to be there? It needs to stay strong, so to speak. Any thoughts? Uh, I'm thinking. Uh, again, it depends. It, it, it depends on what you're using, how you're using it, in the sense of could we go stronger on fair use in effect of quotes again and songs and, and, and stuff like that and how much you, yeah, you use it, you change it up. Yeah, you could go stronger on it, but at the same point, you could let loose because not all, not everything should be copyrighted to the fact of that we can't use anything without paying for it or asking permission or anything like that. I mean, if I want to use a sentence I feel like 22, <laughs> then, then you know, it's kind of my right to say I want, I want to feel that sentence. So in that aspect, you could let loose, but yet you could... Uh, yeah. Or you just want to express that you feel 22. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a perfect example in my opinion. But uh, not that I really feel 22 today, just, just pointing that out. Cause it's Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. It's the new. It's Wednesday. It's the new Monday. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> so then let's dive into the next topic of public domain and creative commons. Just to there's actually a difference between the two. Public domain is either something that was once copyrighted, but the copyright expired, or something that cannot be copyrighted, like an idea or a fact. Whereas Creative Commons technically is copyrighted, but the author or copyright owner put it under a Creative Commons license, allowing you to use it as long as you attribute it a certain way, do what they say in that license. So So Creative Commons himself is copyrighted. And you just have to figure out how they allow you to use their work and how you are supposed to credit the work that you are using from Creative Commons. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty accurate statement that yeah, public domain is something that you could just use freely, whereas Creative Commons, you're going to have to research what license is it under, how do they want it attributed. So Creative Commons is basically stock. Well, stock may or may not actually be public domain. It's more so... Because you can find free stock. Images or videos. Okay, so like... Okay, here's an example. Like, typically speaking... If I was to write something, say a story, assuming I have it copyrighted, so in other words, it's not under a Creative Commons license, that that it won't fall into the public domain until 70 years after my death. But under... So an expiration date on copyright. Yeah, copyright does expire. It... It does not last forever. There will come a time when you can when you can say, "Hey, I don't know about you. I'm feeling 22," and literally any in any sense of the 
world, like it'll be public domain, anyone can use it. But of course it's not there yet. It's gonna obviously be a while yet. Yeah, it'll be 70 years. <laughs> After Taylor Swift's death, yeah. When I'm dead? Yeah, chances are. I don't know if any of us are gonna be able to make it that long. But, whereas if I took the story and license it under Creative Commons, technically that story is still copyrighted, but it's under a Creative Commons license. So as long as you attribute me and stick to the license, that what it allows you to use for that purpose, it will allow you to use it for just, just like, you know, so. Whatever you want to use it for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is basically what public domain is. Public domain is whatever you want to use it for. Mm -hmm. Now if it's copyrighted and the copyright expires, the question is, should it be re-copyrighted so no one can still use it after 70 years? Well, uh, there actually used to be a renewal process, but because of the duration of copyright, it's that actually is no longer applicable and it's 70 years actually after the author's death. So like, like if Taylor Swift lives to be a, be 110, say, it's, it's, it'll be once she's dead, then we start counting 70 years, then that'll be when it enters the public domain. So we got roughly 150 years so we can use her work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I didn't know that you couldn't renew it. I didn't know that. Well, well, it used to be, but the reason why is copyright duration actually used to be much shorter. The first copyright law required you to actually register the work before you could apply any copyright to it. Now it's, once it's in a fixed, tangible form, that it's that it's actually copyrighted automatically. You just need to register if you like. You need to sue someone for copyright infringement, but. But anyway, uh, but the original copyright law, it lasted for originally for just 14 years, and then you could renew it to make the total 28 years. And obvi obviously it's changed a lot since then, because now there's no renewal process, no need to register for it to be copyrighted, and it lasts 70 years after the author's death. I agree to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for our last topic, the idea of interconnected ideas versus intellectual property. Now, what I mean by that is ideas are, are sort of considered to be interconnected. There's, in today's world, there's not really such a thing as a 100% original idea. It's basically taking old ideas and using them in new ways and the problem with that is with copyright and other intellectual property laws that it sort of sets up the system that uh, uh, ideas and the expressions of those ideas are like property that need to be protected and it creates this sort of territorial stance that the ideas sort of weren't meant to fit in so there's this dysfunction and it results in lawsuits and things like that so Basically, what do you think? What do you think about that? Do you think copyright is is going too powerful in, in this case, or no? Copyright isn't going too powerful because Steve Jobs would have never made Apple the way it is if it wasn't for Microsoft and Apple kind of working together and getting bouncing ideas off each other. Even though they're separate companies, they still overpowered each other one way or another, the phone, the tablets, the computers, the processors, the software, whatever they're doing, uh, one is still overpowered the other. And because of that, they all copyrighted what they did, but it's still, uh, let's see, what am I trying to say? They're, it's their own work, but it's different people's work put together in one. So I really don't think it's going overpowered because we still need copyright issues because even though, yeah, it was different people's ideas into one, it's still your idea that made that one idea 
possible. So what you're saying is that even though they work together, they still copyrighted their own work, their own ideas, so that they can't steal one another's ideas, but they still put it together to make one whole new product. Exactly, exactly. Actually, one thing that I found out when re researching this topic Actually, neither Microsoft nor Apple created like the modern day idea of a graphical user interface for computers. The original company that thought about that was Xerox actually in a computer way ahead of its time in the late 60s. It had pull down menus and a mouse and keyboard similar to what you'd see in a computer today, but it's more updated. Uh, this is like in the late 60s obviously it's updated now over time but a lot but a lot of the things in a sense were borrowed from Xerox original idea when creating Mac OS or Windows or any of those other sorts of products so so what are you asking exactly uh, like, what's the problem with that, or, or just the fact that Xerox was the original company who made computers way ahead of its time, and then Apple and Microsoft stepped in to make it better? Right. Uh, like, are you saying that should there be copyright on that? Well, uh,. Like I said, all these ideas were interconnected. And obviously, Apple and Microsoft created their like design. th their own designs, their own variations of it. So, so I guess in a sense, there's that. But then again, at, later on, shortly after Apple introduced the iPhone, then suddenly Google came out with Android phones and... Apple didn't take too kindly to this introduction necessarily. I mean, granted, like nothing was stolen from iOS over to Android, but it's sort it of some of the same ideas. Yeah. So. Well, the fact is that no one person can make everything the way it is now, and because you still need one person to have an idea, two to make it better, three to make it better than better and for and so on to make the idea bigger and better and whatnot. So Apple made the first iPhone and Google came out with Android phones. Now Apple wasn't Apple wasn't uh, too kind with that, but at the same time they can't take full credit for their work. Exactly because even though it's similar to Apple's product, Android is still different and the way Android made it different was looking at Apple's product and say okay how can we make this different now the same or goes better. or better same goal with uh, TV shows TV shows are similar in one sense be between mm -hmm. they have the same plot or they have the same storyline especially if they make remakes especially yeah sequels remakes part twos part you know part twos part threes mm -hmm. and everything like that so really it has to be two people or more bouncing each other's ideas off and or copyright. Else we wouldn't be where we are today. Exactly. Now, now obviously, that that's true. It's sort of like that, but do you think that this that idea is sort of at odds with copyright law in the sense that copyright like sets up the, like these. Like sort of sets it up like it's property that you need to protect that it's yours, not that it's mine, not yours, so to speak. And oh yeah, if I, if I was Apple, I'd definitely say, hey, that's really similar to my work. What are you doing here? Because it is in violation of Microsoft violated Apple for what they did in the sense of copying the phone aspect or copying you know similar ideas for what they have so, you know, whether it's software or screens or whatever the case may be so yeah Apple was right for saying hey that's my work but at the same point if it's a little different than what Apple product is Apple can only go so far into they can only copyright 
certain ideas. Exactly. Apple can only copyright certain ideas because no matter what, Android still is different from Apple still mm -hmm. to this day. Battery-wise. Yeah, battery-wise. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. My, my, my Samsung Android lasts like a week and I never even had to charge it. <laughs> my mm. Apple phone only lasts a day. <laughs> My iPad lasts like two days usually. Uh, so they can't copyright battery use. I don't think you can copyright any copy. sort of battery actually. That'd be more so a patent because that's like an invention of product. More, whereas copyright would be more so like maybe the software in the, in the phones or computers. So like word font. Like word what? Word the, font. The word font. Word is a Microsoft running program uh -huh. that's that's copyrighted by Microsoft. Hmm. And the Apple phone can have different fonts if you download. Well, like 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 apps. Apple has Siri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Android doesn't have Siri. It has Google now and then. It has Google, but it doesn't have Siri, so it's the same concept, but you had different ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that wraps up our roundtable discussion. Now, obviously their opinions don't necessarily match up with mine in saying that interconnected ideas help contribute to some of the more broken parts of copyright law. Take, for instance, the Blurred Lines lawsuit brought on by Marvin Gaye's family. The general vibe is there. I'm going to give them that. But even vibe is considered an idea, something that can't be fixed in a tangible form. So, therefore, it can't be copyrighted. So, the idea that Blurred Lines infringes on Got to Give It Up is ridiculous. But needless to say, a jury did find them infringing. But that's just one of many countless other examples. The idea is that ideas are interconnected. It's possible that even two people around the same time come up with a generally the same idea. So it's nothing new that this issue can come at war with intellectual property laws like copyright. But even I'm not a fan of that term. And you will see why in the next episode. So, that wraps up today's podcast of All Rights Reserved. Join us next time where we will discuss a little bit more into the original purpose for copyright law and how it has since wandered away from that intent with the, probably the most currently passed legislation affecting copyright law. Until then, see you next time.